This is Shadea. This is Shadesh. Welcome to the online Bible study brought to you by Grace TV. Here we serve bite-sized spiritual meals through Soul Food First. Please like and follow the Grace TV Facebook page. And please subscribe to the Grace TV YouTube channel. We hope you are ready. Please stand by. Season 3 of Soul Food First is about to be served! This is Pastor Din Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food First. We are still continuing our series on the baptisms in the Bible. So far, we have learned that there are 12 kinds of baptism in the scriptures. Seven of these baptisms are dry and have nothing to do with water, while five have something to do with water. At least, you know, we have corrected that idea that all baptisms should be uh, with water. We know that that is not true. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The question is, out of these 12 baptisms, which one is the one baptism for us today in the dispensation of grace? Or which one is the one baptism that Apostle Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5? Well, this is a very interesting question, isn't it? But before we will answer this question, we will study first the three baptisms that are commonly practiced or three baptisms that are prevalent in our time. These are the baptism with the Holy Spirit, Pentecostal water baptism, and baptism by the Holy Spirit. Now we have to understand that there are churches and religious leaders that practice baptism of fire or baptism with fire but we know from our study yesterday in Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 down to verse 12 that this practice or this baptism practice is very wrong and grossly misunderstood, misused and abused. Why we are saying that? Well, because John the Baptist made it very, very clear that Christ is the only one that performs this baptism, not human beings, not religious leaders. We learn that this baptism is for judgment and condemnation, and the recipients of this baptism are the unbelievers. And the result is that they will be thrown into the lake of fire. What the Bible says as unquenchable fire. So, if people are practicing this baptism of fire or baptism with fire, it is a sign that they do not understand this baptism at all. And they are misusing the scriptures. That is applicable also with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Again, if we go back to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, it clearly says that the one who does this baptism with the Holy Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not people, not religious leaders. This baptism already took place in the book of Acts chapter 2 and the recipients of this baptism were the 11 apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ and that baptism resulted to the apostles being empowered to preach the gospel of the kingdom and were enabled to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. So, if we are really going to think about it, we are 
left with two baptisms. Two baptisms. And these are Pentecostal water baptism and baptism by the Holy Spirit. And why we are saying that? Because again, the baptism with fire, the baptism of fire, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit, both of them are uh, only performed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And no human being, no religious leader can perform those baptisms. Now, let's talk about water baptism. Where did it start? You know, some people think that water baptism is a New Testament teaching brought by uh, John the Baptist. Is it true? What does the Bible say? To understand water baptism, beloved, let's go back to the covenants of God with the people of Israel. Number one, God promised Israel a king and a kingdom. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 down to verse 7. The Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Almighty Father, or, or Everlasting Father, I should say, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And then in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, the Bible says, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. This is the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. This is the promised earthly kingdom that God is going to establish. And it says, which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever that's the kingdom again of king jesus that's going to be established in israel number two these promises that god made to the nation of israel they are guaranteed let's go to romans chapter 11 verses 25 down to verse 29 the Bible says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written, The Deliverer will come out of Zion. And he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And here's the promise of uh, God to the people of Israel that they will be saved. Verse 28, the Bible says, Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Let's go to number three. In the kingdom program, all Israel will be ordained as priests. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61 verse 6. The Bible says, For you shall be named the priest of the Lord. These shall call you the servants of of our God you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 the Bible says blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but these shall be priests of God 
and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Again, referring to the people of Israel, all of them, they will be priests of God. Not just the Levites, but all the people of Israel during the kingdom uh, times. This priestly promise is based upon the covenant of God made to Israel in the book of Exodus chapter 19 verses 5 down to verse 6. The Bible says, Now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For the, uh, all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. Again, the entire nation, the entire kingdom will become kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Not just to the Levites, but to the entire kingdom or, or the nation of Israel. Number four, as priests of God, their job is to bring people to the Lord. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, that's kingdom days, ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of the Jewish man that is one is to ten one jewish man ten gentiles and then this uh, jewish man what is he going to do the bible says that he is going to bring this uh, gentile people to the lord it says let us go with you for we have heard that god is with you number five as priests of god they had to be water baptized or to be washed with water. This is based on the commandment of God to Moses in Exodus chapter 29 verse 1 and then verse 4. The Bible says, This is what you shall do to them, to hallow them for ministering to me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish meaning perfect and in verse 4 it says and Aaron and his sons you shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and you shall wash them with water and here is that washing now here we find that uh, there are reasons why Israel's uh, are going through uh, this baptism or washing letter A because they are to be priests of God. Not just the Levites are going to be priests, but also the entire kingdom. All other tribes, they will also be priests of God. As a nation, they will be priests of God. Now, let there be, this baptism ceremony was to consecrate or sanctify them, to make them ready and qualified to minister for God as his priests. Later see, the priests of God were to be ceremonially washed or to be cleansed with water so that their sins will be ceremony, ceremonially uh, cleansed away. This later, this washing uh, and this baptism is carried over throughout the dispensation of the law as we will learn when we continue this series. Beloved, tune in next week as we continue talking about water baptism and the baptism by the Holy Spirit. We will compare these two baptisms together as we continue. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food.